All right, welcome back, my friends. It's time to look at another problem. Problem five. It says a company is considering changing its policy concerning daily working hours. Currently, this company requires all employees to arrive at work at 8 a.m. The proposed policy would permit each employee to decide when to arrive, from as early as 6 a.m. to as late as 11 a.m. The adoption of this policy would be most likely to decrease employees' productivity if the employees' job functions require them to do what? Okay, so looking at the story, looks like the company is going to change its policy. Right now, people come in at 8, but what will happen is people will, can come in as early as 6 and as late as 11 a.m. Hmm. Okay, so what what requirement would cause this to decrease employees' productivity? A, work if uh, they re were required to work without interruption from other employees. I think it's a maybe, because what this is saying is if, if people come in and to work and they make loud noises and it's very difficult to concentrate, you know, then, then this could uh, really decrease employees' productivity. But then again, the question never really says anything about how loud people are when they come into work. And that's why I'm putting a question mark here. There may be a better answer. Looking at B, consult at least once a day with employees from other companies. That's not, I mean, that's completely irrelevant because people could VC into their comp to the other companies or they could call from home, telecommute. I don't think this really affects productivity. So B's wouldn't be right. C says, submit their work for a supervisor's eventual approval. Well, you could do that when you're in work. It doesn't matter when you come in to work. So it's not C. D says interact frequently with each other throughout the entire day. So D is saying that uh, that these employees all through the work day would need to always interact with each other. And that is something that would probably require face-to-face -face contact. So it could be D. Because if uh, if everyone was coming in at different times, if half the team is coming in at 6 a.m., the other half is coming in at 11 a.m., then everybody who came in at 6 a.m. wouldn't be able to do much of their job until everyone else came in at 11. So then why wouldn't every why can't everyone just come in at 11? But then people do less work. E. Undertake projects that take several days to complete. Well, if it takes several days to complete, then you have several days to do it. It doesn't matter when you come in. So between A and D, A gives a pretty flimsy excuse because this passage never says anything about interruption or how loud people are when they come into work. D, on the other hand, gives perfect reason to explain why uh, the policy would decrease employees' productivity. If people have to interact throughout the entire day, then by changing around their hours and giving people the freedom to come in whenever they want, some people are not going to be able to interact with others, and it's going to decrease everyone's productivity. So, looks like D is going to be the right answer. Okay, let's look at number six. The amount of time it takes for most of a worker's occupational knowledge and skills to become obsolete has been declining because of the introduction of Advanced Manufacturing Technology, or AMT. Given the rate at which AMT is currently being introduced in manufacturing, the average worker's old skills become obsolete and new skills are required within as little as five years. That's interesting because uh, if you work in a tech industry, this is very true. You know that uh, just every month things change and you have to learn new skills. So what this is saying is that, uh, that it generally, uh, the time it takes for that, those knowledge and skills to become obsolete has been declining. Um, it's because this advanced manufacturing technology is, is just changing so fast that it's taking people, uh, or that the rate of, of new technology and, and the things that you must know to do your job has just sped up. And so people have to keep learning new things or become obsolete. Anyway, which of the following plans if feasible will allow a company to prepare most effectively for the rapid, uh, obsolescence obsolescence ah see my my uh, pronunciation needs some work well for the for that uh, of skills described above so they're saying which plan which of these five plans would actually prepare the company for the fact that that uh, skills are becoming obsolete 
really quickly within as little as five years. So let's take a look. A says, the company will, just, will develop a program to offer selected employees the opportunity to receive training six years after they were originally hired. Interesting. So A, at, at first, it's like, oh, well, you know, they're going to receive training. It, it seems pretty good. But A has one fundamental flaw. No, two fundamental flaws. The first is the word selected. They're saying they're only going to allow some employees to be trained. Why wouldn't you train all the employees? If you're just going to train a few of them, then that doesn't really help the company. The second one is six years. It's, it says up here that within as little as five years, technology will become obsolete, right? So if you're going to wait an extra year before you train them, that's an entire year where no one knows what the heck they're doing in the company because they haven't been trained. So A actually is, is pretty poor. B says, the company will increase its investment in AMT every year for a period of at least five years. When I first read this, I thought, investment in AMT, that must mean they're investing in training and resources and, and the knowledge to do it. And this would be good. But actually, investment in AMT means um, they're investing in the technology itself. So this would actually, uh, would actually uh, hurt the company because they're just going to invest in AMT, then then uh, skills are going to become obsolete even faster because the company is, is pushing for AMT. Okay. The company will periodically survey its employees to determine how the introduction of AMT has affected them. Well, if you've worked in a real company, you know that you can take tons and tons of surveys, but they don't actually lead to any action. Haha, <laughs> I'm just joking, of course. But uh, in this case, surveying the employees isn't really going to help them prepare most effectively. It might help them identify issues or help them lead to the solution, but it's not the solution itself. So C is not going to be the right answer. D says, before the introduction of AMT, the company will institute an educational program to inform its employees of the probable consequences of the introduction of AMT. Interesting. So they're saying that before they even announce or release this advanced manufacturing technology, the company will institute an educational program about the probable consequences of the introduction of AMT. So let me give a scenario. What D is saying is if you're working in a company and there's this awesome new manufacturing technology, or let's call it uh, cyber tech. This cyber tech is coming out and the cyber tech is going to make everyone need to to, to learn new skills to do their job. D is not saying, oh, before we come out with cyber tech in this company, we're going to train everyone on cyber tech. No, they're saying that this educational program, which is going to waste everyone's time, is just to tell people that, hey, when we come out with cyber tech, there's probably going to be consequences. You know, the consequences will never be the same. So D is, uh, D is actually kind of stupid. So it's not D. E says the company will ensure that it can offer its employees any training necessary, important here, any ne training necessary for meeting their job requirements. E seems almost too good to be true, but E is the correct answer because the company is going to give everyone training and they don't talk about a time period. They don't talk about any, any uh, other requirements. It's just whatever training you need, you're going to get it. So E is obviously going to allow the company to prepare most effectively for that. Okay, let's look at number seven, which says Treverton's city council wants to minimize the city's average yearly expenditures on its traffic signal lights and so is considering replacing the incandescent bulbs currently in use with arrays of light emitting diodes, so LEDs. I think a lot of this stuff is just very technical. You don't really need to, to understand it. You just have to know that there are incandescent bulbs, old bulbs, and there are new bulbs. Compared to, with, to incandescent bulbs, LED arrays consume less energy and cost no more to purchase. So two benefits. One, less energy usage. Number two, uh, it's just as expensive or cheap. So it's not like the city will have to spend any additional money per bulb. They say, moreover, the cost associated with the conversion of existing fixtures so as to accept LED arrays would be minimal. So the the whole conversion process, hiring people to change all the bulbs, that's going to be really minimal. And therefore, it's kind of, you know, it's it's not it's a non-issue. Now, which of the following would it be most useful to know in determining whether switching to LED arrays would 
be likely to help minimize the yearly maintenance costs. So where's the disconnect here? Well, here they talk about each bulb having, uh, you know, consuming less energy, costing no more to purchase each bulb. Uh, and we also know that installing the bulbs is minimal. But this is talking about yearly maintenance costs. Do we know anything about, with the bulbs, uh, how often we are going to change the bulbs? So if the bulbs burn out every week, it doesn't matter if, if, if the conversion costs are minimal, you're going to have to buy tons and tons of bulbs to, and you're going to have to keep replacing them. Whereas the old bulbs might have lasted for months. So that could be one of the answers. Uh, there could be other things as well. They say consume significantly less energy, but less energy, uh, does it consume a different type of energy? I mean, there's a lot of other things here that could be problematic. But let's look at the answer choices and see what we have. A says, whether the expected service life of LED arrays is at least as long as that of the currently used incandescent bulbs. Oh, okay, so that's just what I just talked about. If the answer to this is yes, it's just as long, then I think we have a pretty good case here. But if the answer is no, it's not going to be as long. It's gonna actually going to burn out faster than, uh, than what this does is it gives you a reason why this would not minimize yearly maintenance costs. It might actually increase or it might even just stay the same. So it could be the answer. Let's look at B. Whether any cities have switched from incandescent lights in their traffic signals to lighting, lighting elements other than LED arrays. So this is saying that we should probably figure out if other cities have switched to anything else, if there's any LED alternatives. What this is, I mean, I think what this is getting at is they want to know, hey, instead of saving money with LED, is there anything else we can use that will save even more money? But that doesn't really make this useful to know. I mean, this is asking whether LEDs will minimize costs. It's not saying whether LEDs is the best solution. So B is uh, out of scope. C says, whether the company from which Traverton currently buys incandescent bulbs for traffic signals also sells LED arrays. Is this getting at, uh, is this, I think this is trying to make you assume that there would be a discount uh, or that there's some kind of loyalty to the to the cities where they could have a special deal. But that is just wishful thinking. And C is definitely not the answer. D says, whether Traverton City Council plans to increase the number of traffic signal lights in Traverton. So D, you could look at D and say, well, if they're going to increase the number of traffic signal lights, then uh, you'd have to buy more bulbs and you would be spending more. But I think... What's interesting here is uh, D is a common wrong answer, I think, because they're saying whether they plan to increase the number of traffic signal lights. But if they increase the number of traffic signal lights, I mean, the the actual fixtures installation is going to be minimal. And what they're really looking for here is, is uh, whether switching to LED rays would help minimize the costs, right? If they increase the number of traffic lights, that those lights would still be using incandescent bulbs. The question is talking about switching. And if we're going from, let's say, 100, uh, 100 traffic lights all the way to 200, they install 100 new ones, then it doesn't really matter because what we're looking at then is converting from 200 incandescent bulbs to 200 LEDs. So D uh, is a tricky answer, but it's not the correct answer. E says whether the crews that currently replace incandescent bulbs in Traverton's traffic signals know how to convert the existing fixtures. It doesn't matter if they know or not. We already know that it's going to be minimal, the, uh, the actual costs. So they could always read a book and figure it out. It doesn't matter if they know or not. They'll figure it out. So E is actually uh, irrelevant as well. So looking at all of these answer choices, it looks like A is going to be the most correct answer because... When you say, when when you look at this question and you say yes, it will be, uh, it is going to last as long. It it really highlights these positives that were already mentioned in the original passage, and it supports. Uh, it really helps support the idea that it would minimize yearly maintenance costs. But if the answer is no, then it this whole thing, this whole project, this plan goes into the trash. So yes, A is the correct answer, and that's how we solve number seven. Ah, oh, I am out of time again, but check me out in the next video, and we'll continue this.